You might have seen videos about the Eventide H90 already, and you were intrigued, which is why you clicked on a video of the length that it showed down there, which is a little bit ridiculous. And I will warn you, in this video, I'm not really playing it a lot. I'm not really going into sounds. I thought it would be necessary to do a video highlighting how it actually operates and how you can get to all the new cool shit that it does versus the previous versions and showing you that on the actual box, which is the cool thing, but you'll spend quite some time with the manual. Um, and then in the editor. I think it makes sense for someone who's got the money in hand and is ready to buy to really show what awaits you in terms of new possibilities, old possibilities, editing in the box, all that. So for those of you who don't know, there's, there's going to be a separate video where I'm playing all the new algorithms and all that stuff. There will be a sound video and I will play some sounds here. And uh, then I don't do all the technical shit in the other video. Eventide H9, that's the max. I also had a core. Most people had two because the sounds are freaking ridiculous. If you want to know all the algorithms, all the sounds that this had to offer, I have a video where I literally play every single algorithm, which means in the video of the H90, I will not play every single algorithm, only the new ones because I've already covered it. This is brilliant. Stereo and stereo out, MIDI expression input, MIDI right here. Could you edit some parameters on this? Yes. Did you want to? No. Very simple display, one big knob, couple of clickies. I never really knew what they did. This is a hot knob where you could actually have a morph between two different parameters. It's pretty much a preset play box, but presets edited with a Bluetooth app, which was great, or in desktop editor to perfection. And most people had two, the Max, which had all the algorithms, and the Core, which had none of the algorithms. But if you registered both of them in the same account, both of them had all the algorithms, which was very nice. Thank you, Eventide. We could say that the H90 is really just two of those. Sorry, cat's coming in. Um, by the way, if you're asking yourself, why are you all dressed up, Henning? I got married today, but uh, to the amazing woman up there, uh, which you can't see. Hey, Leslie, can you wave behind the window there? There you go, that woman. That's an amazing hand. And uh, you would say, well, why are you making videos? Well, because A, true, dedica true dedication to you guys. I'm not taking a day off. And also, we need to pay for things. That's why. So... You could say that the H90 is nothing but two H9s, double the processing power in a in one box, which means one MIDI uh, cable to it. It's a little bit simpler, but that would be oversimplifying it big time. A, the processing power in the H90 is way more, like ridiculously way more than it is using right now. These were kind of maxed out in terms of processing power, older units that the H90 has loads of processing balls okay there's there's more to come there has to be um but also you can with a uh, uh, the the oled display edit on it itself and i will show you everything that you want to know and thirdly control there's there's so much control that you can do now with hot switches hot knobs uh expression midi all those things extra uh, foot switches, which when I'm going to show you, but not really going to go into. It is quite a bit more. Also, you had one of these H9s in your chain somewhere, and then another one in the chain, but that's where they were sitting. Haha! In the H90, you can move them one before the other, the other before the one. You could actually run them in dual. You could run them in parallel. You can run two different effects as inserts and place them anywhere. It is quite a bit more than just two H9s. Now to cover all that is going to be a freaking nightmare, but we will do it, show the thing. And I will show you how to operate it first on the box, and then you're gonna see how incredibly easy it is once we actually hook it up with USB-C to a computer. Yes, it's got USB-C, um, and then do everything so much easier with the editor. I was hoping there'd be an app because I love the iPad and the iPhone app. It was beautifully designed. There will be, 
it has Bluetooth that is not ready yet. I think they kind of should have had it ready. They've been working on this way before COVID and then COVID hit and there was a problem with um, A to D, D to A converters. And they probably had to redesign this three times because the market wasn't giving them the parts they needed. In the US, $899, which is a ridiculous price. In Europe or Germany, $1199, including tax. And you're going to say that's a lot for a pedal. And you might be right, but this is even tight shit. This is all the algorithms from the H9 plus more. Ridiculous processing power, amazing control. I would dare say that if you have this as your effect on your board and you have it wired in an intelligent way, you'd be hard pressed to find something that it doesn't do. So uh, it is without a doubt worth the money if you're serious. You can also run a guitar through it on one path and then on another path, wire it up with uh, for your DAW. You could have this wired into your into your mixer or your DAW as two independent effects in two different paths. But if you let's say one day you just want to run delay and reverb for vocals, you move both on that path. It's brilliantly done. So we're gonna go through some lingo here. We're gonna we're gonna get into it. You never got the dog hair off of it. Well, where's the dog hair? Let's just saying there's a dog here on it. More than one. More than one dog here. Did did even Tide deliver it with the dog here? There's one. There's also a crumb there. Where's it? Where's a crumb? Where you just removed the hairs, yes. And then in the middle is another dog hair. Crumb? In the middle? Above the metal clicky thing. I don't see it. <laughs> where the black triangle is. How are you seeing that? I'm right in front of it. work. Okay, do not think that your H90 comes with dog hair. That is a very special addition that Eventide sent to me. That's uh, Yours doesn't come with dog hair. That's extra. There is a performance mode by clicking this, which I asked. You can gently, with the tip of your foot, not your heel, operate that with your foot. Because, look, right now, these three foot switches showing you active states for either the whole program or each of the algorithms independently. Doesn't have to be that way. I can program those to do a myriad of things. There's actually a second layer and now it is actually turning hot switches on and off and we're going to get to what hot switches are. That's actually kind of cool. Um, but how would you switch back and forth in a life situation and I asked you allowed to click this gently with your foot it is designed to do that however it has two expression inputs on the back right now I've got one expression pedal wired in but there's two that could be two expression pedals or the fulcrum from 901 sound which would be a, a 3 or 2d expression pedal we're going to get to that uh, at some point once they sent me one but you can also uh, wire in two three button foot switches which gives you six more foot switches. So you could literally have six different functions and not have to switch between these. But for example, instead of having this uh, turn the delay or in this case, the, the, the overdrive on off, you could actually have it uh, be an, a momentary active. So overdrive in this case, and then no overdrive. So momentary. You could have it uh, hot switch two on and off Hot switch to momentary. So momentary, hot switch, hot switch. You see it turns red. So depending on what the uh, parameters are, it could be delay time. It could be uh, repeat on and off, repeat momentary. There's a lot of performance options for the preset that you're in. So this is the perform mode. And here we are in the select mode. You see one algorithm right there. It's not turned on one algorithm right there. And you would think, well, I just click these and then it's on. Well, but this is actually right now, program down, program up. And you activate it right here. So this is a program select mode. So you see, I'm actually stepping through programs. So I'm going to go back to 10. Actually here, it flashes. Now it's active. So you pick your program. It's not active. You're still playing your old one. And then 
click it. By the way, you're still playing your old one. This is 100% spillover from program to program. I hope that works now because you can turn that off. Old one's still ringing. That's awesome. That's because of the ridiculous processing power. So um, if you hold this in long, select, we're going to bank mode. And now, just like on a Strymon pedal, you've got three different presets. So you got 10, 11, and 12. And they switch immediately. <laughs> Okay, um, how do you change banks? I had to ask, I had to call about that. Uh, you hold in B or A longer and then you're switching banks of three. Simple, simple. There you go. And now we're back into the preset mode. So you can see Weed Whacker, which is a, a drive. The drives are actually not shit. They're digital drives, but if you had to, you could get away with using this um, in front or actually for cable method into a tube amp and use the drives. It's kind of a waste. It's a 1200, 600, you know, 600 euro drive technically because you're using half the processing power, but you could if you had to in a pitch. But the space time is off right now and you can't turn it on here. So you're clicking this. First, you click this to select the other side, see it now jumps back, and now I can actually turn the weed whacker on and off. So there you go. And now I actually have the reverb as well. What you're hearing is I'm going straight into the H90. I've got something in the insert which is not on. And then I'm going, uh, let's see, can I actually show that? I've got the uh, Black Tweed Plus from Volta in the insert, um, but then that's going stereo into the Woodrow from Universal Audio um, into directly the X4 from Universal Audio audio interface. Uh, sometimes it's pushing the Woodrow too hard. I have a little bit of an issue with the setup in and out level. Sometimes it's just too hot and sometimes it's not. But you can obviously set that globally or per, per side, the Weed Whacker side in and out, the space time in and out. So let's go to that. What we're in now is called a program. A program is both algorithms, both sides, uh, a routing assignment, uh, a name, and uh, global program parameters. And they are, you have to always look, where are we? They are signified by the P for program. How do I get to the program parameters? Actually, I don't know if I... AAA, uh, -A -A -B, B, B, so I can't get to the program stuff here. Um, but on others, I have like a P mix, for example. Uh, I'll show you. Program parameters. Come here. Mix, in gain, out gain, tails, kill dry, and hot knob. Um, so if I'm going to go with mix, done see this it says go out and now i have program mix a gate threshold a drive so these quick knobs not hot knobs some that is quick knobs hot knob that's different and hot switch playing with the quick hot switch knob okay Get three quick knobs, completely programmable. By clicking, you can see you're changing layers there. So right now I'm on the, that layer. So you got two different layers and they don't necessarily have to be an A layer and a B layer. A layer meaning for algorithm one, B for algorithm two. No, it, uh, it can be anything that you, want have, uh, that you want to have access to. So those are quick knobs. By clicking e e either of them, it changes the layer. And I just switched it to um, program mix. And now I can actually have a full mix for everything. So literally. 
That's my clean sound. Okay, so program is everything. A preset. The lingo is a little bit weird. A preset is one of the two sides. So either the A side or the B side. You click preset. Right now I'm on Weed Whacker or Space Time. Okay. And it's actually very nice. There's a, let's say, built in library of presets or programs. If I only want to change the Weed Whacker, let's say, to a nice delay, I can. Go either through all, user, or factory. Let's go through all. I'm going to say type, delay. Let's see what we have. We got delay, distortion, EQ, there's only one, I think. Looper, there's only one. Modulation, quite a few. Multi, pitch, reverb, synth, utility. So we're going to go to delay, and then I can actually pick which algorithm I want. Let's go to filter pong because that's crazy. And now, once I hit, once I use select, it's going only through filter pong delays and presets of those. Okay, that's why it's called preset. <laughs> Let's pick that back here. Now you can see it says filter pong. Pretty straightforward so far. You want to change the space time to some modulation. Click. Make sure you're on the B side. Even vibe sounds good. Good to go. Now, if I wanted to save that program, hold in programs, and now you can save it. You can rename it and do all of that. If I only wanted to change uh, or save, let's say, the filter pong setting to use it in some other program or the even vibe, let's say the filter pong, everything I've done on it, hold this in and there you go, hold presets in and now you're changing the pong or click again to change to B, hold it in and you're changing the air bubbles. Takes a bit to understand these things, but after a day or two you get it and you definitely want to use the software. So, but the great thing is you can do it right here. By the way, these are in and output levels. So if I'm playing, you can see it would show you if it's too much on the back. There are eight in and out levels for uh, line. If I were to use line with my uh, uh, DAW or something like this, it has four ins and four outs. And how to use them, I will show you. You can just, you know, use it with a single amp one in, one out, done. Program, pretty clear. You can also look for programs. And there's a, an ambient list, a bass list, a factory one list, an H9 max list, a lead list, a rhythmic list, a user list, user two, three, four, vibey list, wow, loads of lists. And they can be up to 99 programs long. So I don't think you're going to run out of program space. Oh, it's just use this to go back to something. Parameters will get us into the actual nitty gritty of the presets. Let's say presets. Right now you're seeing we're editing even vibe, air bubbles. I can go through all the parameters. So relatively straightforward. Uh, it looks kind of in terms of the interface like something you would know from a Helix. So pretty, pretty simple. 
no uh, preset ever has like, you know, 50 different parameters. It's relatively easy to see what's happening there. Um, if I want to change it, I click parameters again. Now I'm on the program level, meaning what applies to both of them. So we got mix, in, out, gain, tails, and kill dry. And now I'm on A. There are my filter pong, delay A, delay B, what they're set to, quarter or triplet, I don't want that. Um, and so on and so on and all the different things. So you simply just click this to uh, cycle through or you actually use these. Now I'm on P, now I'm on B, now I'm on A. So if you really want to jump quickly without clicking, it's only three clicks. But you can actually use these LEDs. They are also an interface. Kind of nice. We'll get a little bit into the parameters in a sec. I want to talk about routing. Right now, you can see delay and modulation in series. First delay, then modulation. Wait, wasn't there a swap? There was a swap. Ah, yeah. I just clicked this because modulation into delay might make more sense. And instead of actually completely reprogramming it, saving the preset, saving the preset, calling up the preset on A, calling up the preset on B, you just swap them. <laughs> Swap them. See, now the delay actually gets uh, shushy bushied. So let's keep it like that. I've got two inserts. Right now, I'm using one. Insert one, I'm going out of out three because I have out one and two used for um, my stereo output. And actually, if we're holding these two, holding, we can see the global settings. Everything is set to instrument level. You can also set that to line level. Individually, one could be line, one could be an instrument. These are not set, these could be set to switch, but right now they're expression. And you can actually see what is plugged in. Kind of neat. I'm going into one, out of one, two stereo, but I have an insert out of three into a pedal, back into three from the pedal. And while we're here, there's a cat. Um, go back here. Oh, no, wait. Uh, while we're on the system, let's just stay there. Oh, back here. Uh, there's a global setting. Spill over time, 10 seconds. That's quite a bit. A global kill dry and so on. Then we got MIDI. MIDI settings you would like to do. So this is very important because I had the big question, do I really need a MIDI interface uh, in and out to use this with my DAW and use my DAW to clock it because I really want to clock it for certain time-based effects. And now you don't need that. You can actually use USB and that's freaking brilliant. Finally, a super easy USB-C way to hook it up to your computer and tell the damn thing, go 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 with the timing that I set up in my DAW. That's how you do it, people. So, uh, I'm excited about that. Uh, preferences is just the brightness of the screen. There's a screensaver where the H9 logo, H90 logo goes back and forth, and you're really hoping it's hitting the corners. It never hits the freaking corners. And about is telling you things. So, not too much there. I'm um, gonna go. How do I get out of there? Here we go. Uh, I don't know how to get out of there. Uh, uh, um, how did I get out of there earlier? Okay. Um, also, when you're holding these two in, you got a tuner. You don't have to buy one. It works. It's not sexy. I would like to see some color, but it works. Routing, delay, modulation, that's where we were. I have this pedal, oopsie, the Black Tweed Plus wired in. So we're gonna go now and just turn insert one off, uh, on, I'm sorry. Now it's showing me where it is. I have it before everything, which might make sense. <laughs> Thank you. 
it doesn't make a lot of sense to put that behind the delay. But I could. I could put it behind everything. What if I wanted my delay in my even vibe to be clean and have the distortion or the drive running in parallel? You usually can't do that on your board unless you've got a pretty complicated setup. Now, my drive is running in parallel. Hear the delays? S squeaky clean. What if I want a realistic kind of a thing? Well, then actually I would swap and likely put the vibe before my drive. There you go. So very easily you can see you can move that around, but something you couldn't do uh, that well easily. Actually, on your pedal board swapping two H lines like this, pretty difficult. Uh, you have to recable. A uh, having them in parallel. Right now, the vibe and the delay are doing their own thing without going into each other. The delay is not vibed. What if I want to send my drive only into the delay and not be vibed, for example? We're going to turn insert one on again. Right now it's going into both. Now it's only going into the vibe. Now it's only going into the delay. My delay is still squeaky clean. I could also move it in parallel. So everything's parallel now. The drive or whatever the fuck you put in the insert. It's up to you. Completely independent of the other two. And that's just one insert. Let's not have that active, because I don't have a second insert. So uh, you could have a second pedal in front of one of the sides, whereas while well, you have the other pedal parallel. That's just crazy shits. Have both of them in parallel. Y you see the... The possibilities here, right? I mean, oh wait, uh, one. Now these are mono inserts at the moment. How do you change them to a, a, a stereo insert? Because right now I'm running it kind of in stereo. What if I wanted another stereo effect to be addressed in stereo? Then you turn this all the way to the right. Now it's one stereo insert. Look at this. I can actually put my one stereo insert on one side of the path. I can do the same thing with my stereo insert. That is crazy shit. Okay. And right now, oh, 
God, even tight. Why do you make me do this? There's so much. Right now, this is running everything as a, as a single path. You could run the two sides or the two processing elements completely independently as if it's literally two boxes. Uh, there you can actually set the uh, levels, the send level, the return level, and the mix. Yes, even for the insert, I could have uh, only half distortion if I wanted to. The insert can also be mixed in. If that was a delay, you could have 50-50 mix on that. Um, now, and if I go turn two on, you actually have two individual pages. Uh, you can change the polarity. If you have some phase issues, you could do that. You could even delay. You could even delay the insert. So if you're saying, I want my insert to be a little bit later, you can actually put latency on it and turn the tails on and off for both inserts. I mean, that shit's crazy, okay? In global, we're going to turn these off. In global, routing. Routing is now insert. We can change that. Oh, by the way, you can turn the bypass uh, to relay or DSP, meaning is it buffered or not. Um, insert. We're changing this. We're confirming it. Now it's in dual mode, which means I could really run my guitar into one side into an amp while the other side is set up with line level to run my DAW or to work on a mixing console for the vocalist. Whatever. You're literally buying two completely independent effects. And for each program, not preset, we're not calling it that, for each program, you could actually define that the guitar player is getting both uh, processes and the vocalist is getting nothing. Or uh, the guitar player is getting uh, something and the vocalist is getting something. Or the vocalist is getting both, depending on the program, whoever needs it. And you do it this way, routing. And now you can see that my path is on one side, which means I would be going in, in stereo into one and two and out of one and two and both sides are now the guitar players, let's say. The vocalist is not getting anything, okay? Or I have a parallel path. Don't know what that is. It's how I have it wired up. Um, right now I'm getting the delay and on the other side, three and four in and three and four out is getting the modulation. Both of them now in parallel. There's a cat. Uh, for the vocalist or in series for the vocalist. All can be defined per program. But it also means it could be on your pedal board. Get this in full stereo if you wanted that in two different spots in your pedal board. So you could, let's just say uh, routing the path one or uh, on top is in front of your amp in stereo if you're running stereo amps. Crazy setup. You're going into two amps. And at the bottom, it's in the effects loops. So right now, both algorithms are in front of your two amps. Your two amps, if you wanted that. Um, right now, one algorithm is going into one amp. The other algorithm is going into the other amp, if you wanted that. Uh, not necessarily. No, they're both in stereo, but they're not affecting each other. You can probably pan them. I don't know. Um, Pre-post. Now, one is going into the front of your amps, the other one going into effects loops of the amps. But what if you're running two time-based effects? Well, then you're just doing this, and then they're both in the effects loops. That's some cool shit. I mean, undoubtedly, that's some cool shit. Whew. We already talked about the performance mode. Uh, we haven't talked about what hot switches are in the performance mode. So if I go into the performance mode on this one, for example, you can see that we've got a tap. Easy. Uh, momentary repeat. Let's try this. Oh, got to turn it on, I think. Oh, I think I moved them to the other side because I'm in dual mode. Uh, so we click on that. Performance mode. So 
result, getting the repeats up. If I click this, I've got hot switch one, two, three. Let's see what that does. So it's the same program, but with different settings. Only one hot switch can be on at a time because it literally changes the settings. So uh, you can't change the settings and then change the settings on top of the settings. That doesn't make sense. So hot switch two would be different settings. Let's say this is on. Way more repeats and, and, and mix. are a way to get you different settings of the effect you already have on uh, at the touch of a button. And there are three of them. And I will show you how to assign them because this is what this video is about. A serious deep dive into everything. Trust me, I didn't want to do it, but I have a feeling that someone needs to and that someone is apparently me. So that means we're going into parameters. Remember, now I can switch P, A, B, why they grayed out. Go out of here. Oh, because the whole thing's off. Haha, <laughs> that's why. Uh, parameters. So a P. Can also turn that on and off. There's an ambient delay. And let's just look at it. Wet mix, blah, blah, blah. We go on the next page. Oh, this is very cool. If you wanted to sync to an external, there's a little metronome. All you do is click these, because it says tempo, see? Click. Oops. Ah, what do you do? Click them. And now it's not, now it's synced, 16th triplets, you see that? And now it's not synced, now it's milliseconds. There you go. Uh, if you're holding this in, you got a tempo you can set up exactly, or global program, or MIDI clock. Either you set up a global tempo, probably global tap tempo, do it per program, which would make sense to me because I would program each program to be going along live with a specific song. The drummer has a click in his ear with the perfect timing and my effects are going along with that beats per minute that I set up. Or I'm actually getting MIDI clock maybe from the drummer's metronome. Could be cool. So we're going to go with program here. But you just hold these two in and again here gets you out of it. So we were in um, A, uh, right here. And that's just crossfade modulation depth. I mean, this all changes for each of the algorithms, okay? Um, so how do I change my digital delay, which I don't want? Uh, well, right there, delay. Let's go to, I don't want a digital delay. I want headspace. And all I got to do is, I don't know if there's a default headspace. Maybe. It goes back to digital delay. But anything I change here, look, is going to be headspace, except the one that I started off, which is going to be digital delays. So I can always go back to where I was in terms of my settings and all that. But let's go to headspace. Maybe headspace is the you know, default one. go back here and now oh wait uh, presets parameters there we go um and now all the parameters are actually headspace parameters oh that's uh you know well obviously a multi-head tape delay headspace is kind of loud well because it's a tape delay obviously so let's go to digital again duct digital wonderful parameters so on parameters let's talk about performance parameters uh, or setting up some things. How do you pick which parameters are on the hot knobs? Let's see if that is done here. I think not. No, it is not. Good, good, good to know. 
I go back into select. Now I have the two layers, remember? A and B. You hold in, not hot knobs, quick knobs. Oh my God. That's the hot knob. So I can now pick what I want. So I could say I want in gain, out gain for A, trails, kill dry. I want my mix for A. That's already on here. Oh, well, then I want delay A. And here I want, you see that says B? I want A delay B. There we go. What do I do? I'm switching the two pages. I'm not on page two yet, so I don't care. So I go back. And now I got wet mix delay A and delay B. Let's see if that is actually happening. <laughs> Let's turn the reverb off. Done. I want a lot more mix there. Fun. Um, and you change delay A to dotted eighth and delay B to dotted quarter. Why not? Can't do it. Awesome. So that's how you do that. In parameters mode, what you actually do is assign controls to the parameters. Let's say wet mix. Now you hold it in. And now parameter wet mix, you can change that right here. For example, any parameter, you don't have to go back and then hold in that knob. You could, let's say, go over here, modulation depth, hold that in. And now it's going to automatically go to modulation depth. But you could also change it right there. So I, I want wet, uh, wet mix. You could also, I think, down here, change between, oh my god, I can't do this, it's so long. Change between A, P, B, A, A, P, A, and B, and assign parameters. You don't have to go out and back in. So I want to be on A, wet mix. Um, right now, it's assigned to hot knob A, which you can do, but I think you can assign that to several, I think. But actually, what I want to do Control source off. We can learn the source. I don't know how that works, probably with MIDI. Hot knob A, which I think is the big knob, and the hot knob can also be controlled by a, um, an expression pedal. I will show you uh, when you're in performance mode. No, when you're in parameter mode, actually. Uh, hot knob P is the global hot knob, and I'll show you what a hot knob does. Any MIDI continuous controller, expression pedal 1 aux switch, so you can actually switch probably between two, two different states, and you can actually assign any of the six external switches. Let's do expression for now. At one or two, I've got only one assigned. And right now, that's it. So, if I go out of here, I have an expression pedal on the floor. You can actually see, can't really get all the way up because it's probably already assigned, but I can actually use that pedal to go up and down with of my delay mix. Oh, that's the whole mix, uh, including my guitar. So, I mean, let me find out how I did this. Expression pedal. You click this up here, you go on the second page, and there you actually define your start and end points. So I can say, never go all the way to zero. Go to 27 minimum and 100 max. And if we do this now, you can see, I'm going all the way down on my expression. No idea why at 27 we don't hear it anymore. I, I'm, I'm clueless.
Now it's not doing anything anymore. Hello? Come on! So I could also, let's uh, turn that off. Red Mix actually switch this to hot knob, I think. Tails kill drive. There we go, hot knob. Hot knob P. But actually, I want the hot knob to be controlled by my expression pedal. There we go. And that would be the hot knob for A. See, the knob does it, but my expression pedal decided not to do it anymore. I'm going to reboot this and see what happens. Yep, it literally had to be rebooted. It just wasn't seeing the expression pedal anymore. Okay, well, we found a little bit of a bug. So why did I now assign it to the hot knob? Well, because the hot knob actually is a whole bunch of parameters that I can do at the same time. I'll show you. I'm at parameters. Let's go to wet mix. There's nothing. Uh, delay mix, delay A, hot knob A, setting my range, delay B, hot knob A, set in a different range. I have no idea what I'm doing right now. Uh, we're going to go feedback B, hot knob A. Actually, as my delay increases, I want the... Uh, feedback to go down, so I'm actually crossing these, so it actually goes in a different direction, see this? So, um, let's just say that's enough. So now, both delay times will, you can actually see it. So, both delay times will go up in different increments, but the feedback will go down, see this? Uh, in gain <laughs> is on the expression pedal. We're going to turn that off. That's why it didn't work. Here we go. So more feedback. point is you can completely morph between two different settings with the hot knob settings. All you got to do is pick the parameters you want morphed, assign a top and a bottom range, and then assign what you want to morph them with. Uh, you could do this with this knob, with your foot maybe. You could do it with an expression pedal. You could do it through MIDI. You might even do it... Uh, no, not a hot switch. That doesn't work. Uh, maybe momentary hot knob. I don't. I don't know that work. If that works. No, I don't think so. So um, let's see. Make it big again. We're almost there. Which just leaves our hot switch assignments. We're actually yeah. We're almost there. Okay. So for the hot knobs, um, you actually see hot knob A. So if I'm, I think I kind of have to be here in order to change that with an expression pedal. I think I could assign hot knob B, but how do I? I don't know. Oh, I mean, now this does hot knob B, not A. Now this does hot knob A. But with the expression pedals, you could do anything. And if you're in performance mode right here, it's always the program hot knob. So there's three different hot knobs. I say hot knob a lot. Um, but when we go to the hot switches, how do you define those? Remember, they're just a different setting for the program. Go to parameters. You're holding P, A, or B for hot switch one, two, or three. Hold it in. Hot switch two. And now you are changing 
the program layer preset A or preset B. So let's say I want my overall mix to jump up. Click it. Uh, or to jump down. Bam. That's it. Uh, I want my feedback and all my delay B. I want this delay time to be all of a sudden loads and this delay time to be much less. Ah, oh, it's delay mix. Okay, whatever. I want this delay time to be loads and I want the decay on the reverb to jump up. There you go. That is now my hot switch 2. Hot switch 1. Hold it in. Hot switch 1. Um, overall mix big time. Decay, much less. Modulation, depth, loads. We kind of heard something like that before. So that's it. Now I go here to performance mode and I've got my hot switches. Remember I took the mix down. So you can set yourself up uh, different settings, three different ones, if you wanted that. Um, again, but by clicking on this, I could do hot switch to momentary. So, so I'm on hot switch one. We defined hot switches, we defined hot knobs, we defined quick knobs. We talked about, I mean, not everything. There, there's a billion things. We didn't even look at all the algorithms, we can't. But this is how, trust me, if you've read the manual, watch this video a couple more times and spend some serious time with the H90 yourself. You do not need the app, which I recommend when it comes out for your phone, and you do not need the editor. That being said, we really should look at the editor because now you know what a program is. Now you know the different the, uh, that there's algorithms within the different categories. Uh, so there's not just a delay, there's loads of delay algorithms within each algorithm are different settings. Now you know that there are uh, routing assignments. Now you know that there are quick knobs, hot knobs, which could also be maneuvered with an expression pedal uh, or MIDI. And now you know that there are hot switches. Once you see the editor, you're going to go like, oh, thank the Lord. It's actually fairly straightforward. I hit connect, hooked up with USB-C, and I'm going to go to clean ambient. Showing me clean ambient. Don't really, I mean, whatever I do here will very likely it. Wait, where's my, ah, oh, parameters. This does not, ah, oh, well, it shows up because it does wet mix. Okay, so on the left side, you can see the banks of three. You can see the little symbols, which you have to learn about what algorithm is what. At the very bottom, you see parameters, which we have here. Routing, inserts control assignments, much simpler in the editor, and a full preset library. On the top, you see edit, programs, and system. System, we talked about loads of switching op options, and it actually now shows you, you can do anything you want here. Let's say increment, decrement uh, of uh, programs. You can do that with the aux switch if you so choose to actually put an external, two external three button foot switches on it. You can say aux switch one, Oh, and it then actually sends continuous controllers as well if you wanted that. Uh, there is so much you could do. Let's stay on edit for now. Parameters for the two different sides. Up here, I've got my A and my B. 
there's actually documentation you can call up for that algorithm. That's neat. You can save that one to your library. You can import a preset from the H9. You can also very conveniently bypass it. And you can actually see, if I'm clicking bypass here, you can actually see it all reflected on the pedal. So everything you do immediately takes effect and you can play it. Oh, that's actually neat. There's an effect side for the... Uh, now you can... Okay. That's actually neat. There's an effect side uh, in terms of parameters and a general, which is the in-game, out-game bypass. In and out-game, you will have to fiddle around with uh, Tails, Tempo Mode, On, Off, uh, hot, hot Knob, and Kill Drive. So there's a, a general and an effect for each of those, which means you don't have all these parameters, which you likely don't need that much on the effects page. So... Down here is the P side. If you bypass that, everything is bypassed. And that's the program mix, program in gain, out gain, hot knob, kill dry trails. Okay, that's programs. And remember, programs are two presets combined and a routing. If I wanted to change this, then I go to, wait, not, not routing inserts. You go to the preset library, pick which, which side you want to change. Let's say this. You can do this by effect type or go directly on an algorithm. So I would like multi. I don't even know what multi is. Space time. There. Play that. Okay, done. Bypass that. Go to this side, and I'm picking pitch or synth. Uh, why not? You can actually pick several. You could then pick one of the two algorithms, hot sauce or synthesizer, and now it's only showing you presets, motorbike lead. A little bit much. Uh, so let's do this. Okay, we'll, we'll take that. Now, of course, we're sending space time into the lead. That can't really work. So I'm going to routing. And where's my swap button button? Has to be swap button. Don't, don't, know, don't know how to do it. Insert. So you can do stereo here. Parallel. Parallel may, might make sense. That tracking is ridiculously nice. But how do I double click? Anyone? I don't know how to swap. So <laughs> I know how to do it here. Bam. Um, let's pick something instead of that from the new pitch stuff. Oh, there's so many. Oh, micro pitch, pitch flex, uh, polyphony. That's, I think, cool. That is absolutely beautiful. Um, oh, and it swapped them here. It still calls them A and B. I like that. And here are all the parameters. Uh, delay A, pitch shift A. That's a fifth. That's a fourth. I want that to be an octave. And you see how quickly you do that. Now, if you wanted to assign something to it, you just go to the little corner here. And then you just say preset hot knob, program hot knob, MIDI continuous controller, effect uh, expression pedal. Let's do that expression pedal one. Done. Uh, what's the range? Well, we're going to go from a unison to two octaves. Okay. So 
in-game has, as you can see down here, uh, somehow has the expression pedal assigned. It looks like that's been done for loads of them. We don't want that. We're going to, we're going to turn that off, and now there's nothing assigned. Oopsie. Two octaves, come on. doesn't recognize all the way up on there. Doesn't go all the way up on that thing, come on. But you can see I can control this hand free with my foot, so that's kind of nice. You could also do this with the uh, program hot knob. Right now, I'm doing it on the thing, behind the thing there, with the program hot knob. And, just to reiterate that, level A, we're gonna do triplets, I mean, come on, eighth notes, uh, we're gonna do quarter notes, do dotted eighth, much fun, much much funnier. But very simply, I can do the program hot knob, the yes, the program hot knob, and I'm going to do this. And here we're gonna do the program hot knob, and we're gonna do actually the opposite. We're gonna go crisscross. And as I now manipulate the program hot knob, you can see that all these parameters are doing their thing. And I could, of course, do the same thing. See, there's my program hot knob right down there. It's much easier to see in the editor, which I'm now actually controlling with the expression pedal. Look at that. I can actually also define the range of that. I mean, it makes a lot of sense to use the editor, and it'll be very, very cool once they have an iPhone version, but if you absolutely had to, I showed you how to do it all on the actual pedal, right? So this is super, super cool and very quick to get control over your effects or to very quickly actually program an effect. Go over here, uh, program the space time. Uh, hot switches right there. Look, there's hot switch one, two, three right down here. This is the actual program. Here's my hot switch and all that you're doing is, this is showing you that there's controls from the hot knob, I can add it, and now just do a different setting. Here, I can add pan A, bam, pan B, bring them in a bit. So I've got them all the way panned out, but on hot switch, I actually go down on my delay and I go down on my delay um, and have the panning going in. Hot switch three, we're actually gonna go down here, loads of feedback on this. Uh, hot switch two, I'm sorry. We're gonna take the mix down on our polyphony. Uh, we're gonna bring the mix up on our space time. I, I have no idea what I'm doing here, but let's see, hot switch is all off. So. So let's uh, polyphony, blah, 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 blah. This is how you do the hot switch programming. It's simply giving you three other options to set up the parameters. Pretty damn dandy. You can, of course, go through all these different banks, arrange them in your own sets, uh, save it, uh, import it, share. <laughs> And here, it's extremely quick. What's with the triplets? They love their triplets. Um, it's extremely quick to edit your sound. So a little bit less than that. I uh, want full mix on my wheat whacker. I want more gain, so I'm going to turn stage two on. Or 
we go to something that... Cool. Uh, we're going to go to routing inserts. And look how quickly we can actually change the routing on this. Um, do we want it in parallel? Yes. I want to keep the... I want to keep those clean, but I want to drive my reverb with my insert there, For, uh, which, I, which is still that water pedal. I don't know if I covered everything. I think I did. Uh, okay, well, here programs. Let's do this. Uh, these are, of course, programs. These are combined programs. So you can say, I want a program that is delay and features, that has delay in it and features the Ultra Tap, which I love. It's one of my favorite sounds. You can actually get that as a separate pedal. Uh, brilliant pedal. So it's showing you all of those. Here it's pushing a little bit too hard on the on the uh, uh, going out, and it's clipping. It was definitely clipping my uh, my wood row. So This is some of the stuff we didn't even go into the algorithms you can do with the H90. So if you say, well, it's just two H9s, it's about two H9s if you had the processing power of eight H9s or something like that. It's two H9s if you have the most amazing, complicated routing system set up on the planet. Imagine what you can do with the parallel nature, the series, the, the two... Uh, I mean, it, nobody says you only have to have one pedal in, in the two inserts. It's ridiculous what's possible. It is a brain-melty mindfuck to do it on the pedal. But it is possible. So they're saying, please read the manual. They are correct. If, you, if you're a professional and you need to be able to change things in a pinch. Know your H90. It's possible. Doing it on the screen is with the, with the editor is a breeze. It literally is self-explanatory in five minutes. But knowing where to find and how to access these functions with hot switches, how to change these things, Okay, I want to actually assign something to a hot switch. How do I do that? I go to parameters. I hold that in. Now here are my hot switch two functions. See, it was relatively straightforward. Um, I want to actually change what my quick knobs do. Well, then I'm going to go into the select mode right here. I have two levels, uh, level A, level B. I want level B to for this to be my uh, uh, something else. I want this to be my size, uh, bam. And now it is. It's fully doable. It took me about a day with the manual and playing around with the pedal. But now I know. Now I don't have to continuously call up the app. Uh, the, the, but if you have it on your desk as a studio tool, which you should, because this is fantastic, then you can, of course, have it always connected with USB-C to your computer. 
I will now do a quick video that probably comes out tomorrow. For you, who knows when. Time's relative. Uh, with just some of the new algorithms that I go into, show them to you, and that's it. I think this this is the video nobody wants to see. This is the video you should see if you're ready to buy, but you still have questions. How was it actually done? Can I actually control this, learn it? How is it different to the H9? It is the H9 times two and a whole lot more, especially the routing is beyond ridiculous. That offers so many possibilities. And again, remember, dual routing, I've, I'm repeating myself. Thank you for watching. Thanks, Leslie, for switching. She learned a lot. That was so interesting to the woman. On her wedding day, what else would she do other than uh, live switch and edit an uh, even tight H90 video? I mean, that is what you do. Links below. Please use them. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And animals at the end.